DJ that is best, 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 So let's go into the next area of the bass. So we're moving out of the range of the felt and not heard sub bass area, now up into the more audible and important frequencies in the mid and the top range. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm using two different instrument instances of Native Instruments Massive. Uh, Massive is a pretty common dance plugin. It's what a lot of people are using for synths. It's a really nice modular synth, and I'm using it for pretty much all the bass in this track. So one thing I like about Massive is that it's got three oscillators and you can mix each oscillator individually. So I have each one of these oscillators running and I have basically it's, it's creating a stack. It's creating a three different layers to the sound, which is making it pretty fat. And then I have another instance of Massive that comes in after the first phrase of the bass. So if we solo both of these, let's listen to it. All right, so let's just take a look at how I'm creating that sound. So first of all, what's important to note is that in the MIDI track here, I'm using a envelope. So if we go to pitch bend, you can see I'm actually using a pitch bend envelope to give that sound, that downward sinking kind of sound to it. <laughs> All right, and let's just take a look at the plugins on it. So I'm using Chorus, just a little bit of wet signal there, 7%. I'm using Isotope Trash, which is an important one here. I have the wet dry mixed a lot higher on this one. And if we take a look at Trash, I'm using the distortion cracked actor setting with a bit of overdrive. So it's giving it some nice buzz via Isotope Trash. I'm using a compressor on it. And again, I'm using that metal delay sound. So in this case, I have them linked, so it's not a different left and right channel. But I have the delay time set at 45 milliseconds, and I have a little bit of wet, a little bit of feedback, so it's giving it some space around the sound without having to use a reverb. And then I'm using the Sugar Bites Wow plugin to high pass it and give it some extra drive. And in this case, I'm also using the envelope follower on the frequency. So as you can see, is as the sound plays, it, the envelope follower modulates the frequency cutoff and shapes the sound live in the mix. And finally, I'm using an EQ to trim out the low end and to trim out some of the high end. Now when we move one phrase forwards, I actually stack the massive with another instance of massive. So you can see here, this is another massive device. And this one's running a different patch. So this is one of Matsev's uh, built-in patches, which I've edited a little bit. And this adds another layer to the bass. So let's take a look at what I'm using here. Basically using some EQ to sculpt out the spectrum. Using some chorus. Using, again, isotope trash. A little bit of distortion. In this case, I'm using the elastic trash setting. And then I'm using ozone. And again, I'm using ozone here for stereo widening only. So when you take a look at this, you can see I'm using stereo widening on the top two frequency bands here. So it spreads. When this synth comes in, in addition to the other layer, is it plays on the left and right of it because I've widened it uh, with the stereo image. And also, when it comes in, it just widens the whole track out. So it's a very noticeable effect. And we can't leave out the wobble. Of course, the wobble. So let's take a look at that. So the wobble is coming from a custom patch that I've created in Massive, which is why it's called Vesper's Dubstep Wobble. So I've created this patch. It was pretty easy to make, actually. There's lots of tutorials on YouTube about how to make wobble bass in Massive, so I'm not going to cover exactly how I made it. But one thing I'll just show you is I'm using a lot of the LFO automation on various elements. 
I like the sound when you automate with the LFO the wavetable position on the different oscillators. And then another one that I do is I, I'll modulate the phase. For those of you who might be new to Massive, the way you modulate stuff is you'll just click on your LFO here, you take this and you actually just drag it to one of these boxes and then you can take, click and drag your mouse up and that's how far the modulation will go. So Massive is really easy and uh, excellent to be able to to create interesting sounds because you can just drag and drop the different modulators onto different aspects of the of the plugin. And again, we're getting the wobble sound to the bass by using our filters. So we're using two filters, a daft and a scream filter. We have them mixed um, basically 50%. And what this is doing is the LFO is modulating the cutoff of the different filters. The other thing that's happening is we have one LFO modulating the tempo of the other. So LFO 5 here is the one that's modulating the filter cutoff. But what's happening is LFO 6 is modulating LFO 5's tempo. So LFO 6, you can see here it's, it's rate. LFO 5, when you go here, you can see its rate is automated. So I've basically just taken LFO 6 and I've dragged it onto the rate of LFO5 and so that's why the wobble changes speed as it's playing. So it's also probably good for me to go over some of the plugins that I'm using on the wobble because I'm using a relatively extensive chain here. First of all, this one's a beauty of a free VST. This is a bit crusher plugin from Tal. You can find this by googling the Tal bit crusher. As I said, it's a free VST. I'm just using a little bit of that here. I'm using PSP Vintage Warmer, giving it a little bit of analog saturation, some drive, and I am also using the compressor on it a little bit. So we've given the knee knob a bit of a bit of a bump here. So it's actually using some compression have an EQ8 rolling out the extreme low end from 30 hertz down and taking out a little bit of the top end. And we have the Sonic Maximizer from BBE. And basically this one is boosting the low end by adding in some subfrequency harmonics. And then we've got a simple delay. And the simple delay here is there's no feedback on it, so there'll only be one delay. And I have them linked, so there's not uh, it's not happening on left and right sides of the stereo spectrum. And what this does is it just gives it one slapback. So if we take a look here and we solo, you can hear what I'm talking about. You can hear that little after effect on there and basically what that does is it kind of simulates a really big room slapback and so sometimes I do that on elements that I really want to sound huge and I give them just a you know a little bit of wet dry I'm using 10% here uh, on the simple delay. One last element to the bass is a second version of the wobble and in this case in the breakdown, the second breakdown of the track I go into kind of a half time dubstep breakdown and in this case, I wanted to use basically the same bass sound, but I wanted the LFO to be moving at a slower wobble. So instead of trying to do a bunch of complex automation on the LFO speed, I just duplicated this. It's the, exactly the same plugin. And instead, I just cranked the LFO settings down. So same plugin, same patch, same chain. And let's just listen to how this one sounds. <laughs> Oops, I lied to you. I am using a little bit different settings. As you can see here, I've changed one of the filters, this one from scream to comb. So it does give it a little bit of a slightly more trebly sound to it. So it's uh, more or less the same patch, but a couple little small differences. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, there's our bass. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me.